many different cities, and this is our opportunity to share with you the perspectives from many different companies where we actually come to you instead of you coming to us to learn about what's latest and greatest in the wireless industry, specifically in 3G CDMA. And so we here will assemble a group of folks from different companies that include Alcatel Lucent and Huawei and Ericsson and Motorola. And then we've done these in the past with Qualcomm and ZT as well. Now, unfortunately, we weren't able to make it today because of other activities. And so we come here as a group in solidarity to give you a perspective from all the different players in the wireless industry that are actually leading the wireless industry in many aspects to give you their perspective. We're going to have a few short presentations from each of the presenters from these companies so that we can get right into a Q&A session. And what we found is the Q&A session is the most valuable part of this seminar for you, where you can ask any question as you, that you can come up with and we should have the answers for you. So we want to present to show you where the money flow is, where the money is being generated, where it's being spent to help you in your job. We also are not here to present the individual corporate financials. It's not the purpose of the seminar. It's more of an industry perspective as opposed to a specific corporation perspective as far as their own financials. So um, let me start then just to give you a quick snapshot of the industry and its health, and then we'll turn it over to our uh, speakers here to give you some more information. If you feel that you don't quite understand something, you want to stop us and ask a question, feel free to ask the questions, but then we'll leave plenty of time at the end for uh, remaining questions. So our agenda as such, we'll start off after my overview with Alcatel Lucent. As I was mentioning during uh, the beginning here with some of you that the uh, smartphone impact in the wireless industry has been tremendous. It's been driving a lot of decisions within the industry. So we'll go into some of those aspects with Alcatel Lucent. Obviously access to applications, Motorola will hit us on that and the migration of the networks. And then we'll go to Ericsson, talking about the growth of wireless, specifically CDMA, and then Pat from uh, Huawei will close it up with his perspective and what things we'll be looking at as far as network migration and as far as uh, where we're going to be making lots of money at. So real quick, just so you know, the CDMA 2000 technology is a IMT 2000 technology, which is a 3G technology. There are two dominant flavors, CDMA 2000 and wideband CDMA, and within CDMA 2000 you have EBDO, and within wideband CDMA you have HSPA. There's over a half a billion people in the world that are using CDMA 2000. Between those that have already deployed and intend to deploy, there's about 340 operators worldwide, and this map shows you where they are. The CDMA development group, who I work for, and I'm the VP of marketing for Lawrence, represents the wireless industry for CDMA 2000. We just, in the last year, have opened up two offices. One is in Nigeria, and the other one is in Hong Kong. So that gives you an indication that the industry is growing, that our presence around the globe is expanding. Uh, we're doing business as far as CDMA 2,120 countries. The latest technology that we're deploying is called EBDO Ref B, and the countries on this map that are in red are those countries that have already deployed that technology, which is Pakistan and Indonesia. As far as industry growth for CDMA 2,000, there are out of the 340 carriers that are uh, Committed to CDMA 2000, 314 of them are already commercial, serving the uh, 543 million people. As far as network growth on the left, it shows you that the number of networks is increasing. In CDMA 2000, the CapEx investments in that technology have been relatively fat, slightly flat, slightly negative. So we haven't been seeing a lot of investment in CDMA 2000 until most recently this year. We've actually seen a growth in uh, investments in CDMA 2000 networks, and some of the folks here will talk about that. So that's encouraging for the industry in general, most specifically in CDMA 2000. Most of the network growth has been in the 450 megahertz band, which is what we uh, deploy CDMA 450 in. As far as subscriber growth, you can see we're at 453 million going above 800 million by 2015, so we're seeing a lot of subscriber growth. 3G is on a roll. We're expanding, we're growing quite quickly, and so it's going to be the major source of revenue 
for the wireless industry and all the ancillary businesses that are involved in 3G wireless connectivity. There's a significant migration from second generation wireless to third generation wireless. Second generation wireless is your GSM and then GPRS and Edge type technologies. CDMA did have second generation, but pretty much 98% of anyone that had a second generation CDMA is already onto their third generation CDMA 2000 type device. But what we've seen is 2G has kind of been shifting. We thought that it would eventually migrate to 3G years ago, but it keeps continuing. The longevity of 2G keeps moving to the right of the timeline. But next year we should have many more device shipments than second generation device shipments. So there's a major migration specifically from GSM to UMTS going on across the globe. From the CDMA 2000 perspective, the number of devices shipped with that technology, which is both 1X and EVDO, is continuing to go up. And the majority of the devices will have EVDO in them. So the demand for mobile broadband is driving the demand for EVDO type devices. Every EVDO device has a 1X voice radio codec in it. So uh, as you can see, uh, the dark green shows you the percentage of EVDO shipments for CDMA 2000. This is creating an enormous economies of scale for CDMA 2000. We're going to